to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Would you bow your heads just a moment in a moment of silent prayer? In Jesus' name we pray, dear Lord, amen. Would you turn with me in your Bibles to the Second Corinthians, chapter 4, We're going to read verses 3 through 5. Everyone have that chapter? Amen. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. And this, uh, this epistle was written by Paul. Paul, whose name was Saul, was once a persecutor of the church. He met the Lord on the way to Damascus. Saul was overcome by a bright light which shone all around him. He was struck with blindness commanded by the Lord to go to Damascus, where he met a disciple named Ananias on a street called Straight. Now I need you to walk with me for a few minutes. The Lord told Ananias, Saul is my chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. Ananias did as the Lord commanded him. He laid hands on Saul. The scale fell from Saul's eyes. His sight was restored. He was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, Saul preached Christ, the Son of God. Saul spent some time with the disciples in Damascus. God chose not to send Saul out at this time. When the Lord chooses you, he prepares you for the work he has set for you to do. He equips you for the journey, and he won't send you unless you are chosen, prepared, and equipped for the work that he has set for you to do. Barnabas told Saul, took Saul to the apostles, and he spoke up for Saul because the apostles knew what Saul was before his con uh, conversion. They were afraid of him. They thought that he was going to, again, he was going to try and slay them. But Barnabas told them what took place on the road to Damascus, how he met the Lord and how boldly that Saul had preached the Son of God. The apostles received Saul. Saul tarried in Jerusalem with the apostles and he did preach Christ, the Son of God. Later, Barnabas and Saul went to the church in Antioch. They were there with prophets and teachers. These prophets were inspired interpreters of the will and the purpose of God. There, Barnabas and Saul tarried for a while and ministered to the Lord. Now, I want you to take notice. Saul was with the disciples. Saul was with the apostles. Saul was also with the prophets. During this time, God was preparing him. 
He was training him. He was teaching him. So one day, while the prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Saul, was worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke to the prophets and said, separate now me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work I have called them. The prophets, along with Barnabas and Saul, they fasted and they prayed. The prophets laid hands on Barnabas and Saul and sent them away. According to scripture, this is when Saul's name became Paul. Paul was now prepared for the work the Lord had called him to do. Paul had a burning zeal, patient suffering, and sublime courage. Paul was stoned, he was beaten, he was imprisoned, but continued preaching Christ, the Son of God. He was sought out to be slain, but he let nothing shake his faith and stop him from preaching the gospel. In our text, there were those in the church at Corinth that rebuked the preaching of the gospel and stirred the people against Saul. They were causing havoc within the church. Paul sent Titus to the church at Corinth. Titus reported back that majority of the church had repented and they did believe, but there was still a small group that was not fully persuaded. In 1 Corinthians, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church and raised these questions. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Paul goes on to say, I thank God. I did not baptize one of you. No one but Crispus and Gaius. Because if I had, then you would say that I was baptizing in the name of Paul. Paul stood firm in his faith. Paul wanted them to understand, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with, uh, uh, with verbal eloquence, lest the cross of Christ should be deprived of force and emptied of its power and rendered vain. If we talk about ourselves and we're not talking about Jesus, we're taken away from the cross. So in the cross is power, in the cross is life, in the cross is salvation. We don't want to put any, any don't want to take any at all notice to ourselves. The preaching of the gospel to them that are perishing is foolishness. But to those that are saved, it is the power of God. We have treasure, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, in earthen vessels, which is the ministers. If this gospel is hidden, it is hidden to those that are perishing, that are lost, to those that are spiritually dying and veiled, blinded by the gods of this world, which is Satan. Paul defended the gospel and the authority by which he boldly preached. On March the 10th, 1950, the Lord chose and called Pastor Rudely Monroe Jr. to the gospel preaching Jesus Christ. Now it says your first sermon was recorded on March the 10th, 1950. But I'll be honest with you, Pastor, I don't know a preacher that wasn't preaching before he preached his first sermon. So your recorded sermon was, was recorded on March the 10th, 1950. The Lord was preparing and equipping him for the work he had set for you to do. In 1962, 12 years later, the Lord called you to a people, to a church called Willing Workers Baptist Church. The Lord later instructed you to change the name of that church to El Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. For 51 years, Pastor, you have labored here at El Bethel. 
We realize it has not been all sunshine. Surely you have had some rain. But you have remained steadfast, and you have stood firm in your faith in preaching the gospel. You have been a leader, a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, and a friend. You've boldly preached to us the gospel, Jesus Christ. Pastor, you've taught us that Jesus Christ is the only way why by a man might be saved. And only what we do for Christ will last and be counted in the end. You've taught us that Jesus commanded that we love one another and to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, that our labor not be in vain in the Lord. You've taught us to stand firm on the word of God in our faith not wavering because the lateness of God is never too late. If this gospel which you've preached is hidden, it's hidden to those which are blinded by Satan, we encourage you, Pastor, to continue to preach the word in season and out of season so that wrong hearts may be circumcised by the word of God, which is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and is a discerner of thought and intents of the heart. It cuts left and it cuts right, and that which is corrupt, will come oozing out from like a festered sword. And when empty and cleansed from corruption, the Lord will fill them with the precious Holy Spirit, which is living water from the soul, from a fountain that will never run dry. Preach the word, Pastor, until we all join together with one accord in unity. Praise the one and only true God and living God, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be magnified in our bodies. Preach the word, Pastor. The bridegroom coming. And we want our lights to be trimmed. He's coming with his reward in his hand. We're going to stick our swords in the sandy bank of time. We're going to step over into eternity where we will live with him forevermore. Though we know not what we'll look like, but one thing we know, we're going to be like him. Preach the word, pastor, because this time that we know now soon won't be no more. Preach the word, pastor, because there are still yet souls that need to be saved. Preach the word, pastor, because you count yourself to not have been apprehended. But one thing I still, we're pressing, we're pressing, we're pressing, we're pressing, we're pressing towards the mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. All of your labor has not been in vain. We stand firm in the word. We stand firm with you, Pastor, and encourage you to continue preach the word.